In this video, we're going to focus on the double angle and the half angle formulas. And don't forget that double angles are really an extension of the compound angle formulas you learned earlier. And if you don't know your double angle formulas and your half angle formulas, you should probably go and learn them because this sheet will be a little tricky for you. Okay, let's start with 1a. For 1a, I'm told that sine theta is 5 over 13 and theta is in quadrant 2. So this one, uh, I'm working with the Pythagorean triple of 5, 12, 13. So cos theta is negative 12 over 13. Uh, and it's negative because, like I said earlier, theta is in quadrant 2. So now that I have sine theta as well as cos theta, I can solve for sine 2 theta, cos 2 theta, and tan 2 theta. Sine 2 theta, if you know your double angle formulas, is 2 sine theta cos theta. So just punch in sine theta and cos theta, and then simplify. Cos 2 theta, well, there's three different versions, but I chose to use the 1 minus 2 sine squared theta version because in the question, I was originally given sine theta. You could use any of the three versions, you'll get the same answer. Now, tan 2 theta, I could use the double angle formula for tan. Uh, I can easily tell, tell you what the tan, tan theta is equal to. The tan ratio is, let's see, it's negative, because we're in quadrant 2, negative 5 over 12. But I believe an easier way to solve a tan 2 theta instead of using the double angle formula for tan is using the quotient identity. Tan 2 theta is sine 2 theta over cos 2 theta. So just take this ratio, divide it by this ratio, and you have the answer. Okay, for 1e, uh, I'm told tan theta is 13 over 84 and theta is in quadrant 3. So you probably don't notice, but there's a Pythagorean triple here. It's 13, 84, and 85. If you didn't realize that, then you would just have to use the uh, equation for the circle. x squared plus y squared goes r squared and solve for r. Uh, r is 85, so you have sine theta and cos theta. They're both negative because we're in quadrant 3. So double angle formula for sine, double angle formula for cosine, solve for sine 2 theta, cos 2 theta, because I know what sine theta and cos theta are. And then using sine 2 theta and cos 2 theta, solve for tan 2 theta. So question one is pretty repetitive. That's why I only chose to do 1a, 1e, and 1i. Um, yeah, I'm not even going to go over 1i. Uh, the only reason I wrote it out is because I'm starting off with cosecant theta. Um, the one part I like about this question is they told me that cosecant is positive and secant is negative. So you have to think a little because cosecant is reciprocal of sine and secant is reciprocal of cosine. So sine is positive, cosine is negative, that means we're in quadrant 2. And 3, 4, 5, Pythagorean triple, and you can solve our sine 2 theta, cos 2 theta, and tan 2 theta. All right. Let's do 2a. 2a, a lot of students have uh, trouble with this question. They always ask me for extra help on this one. So I'm told sine 2, the 2 theta is 24 over 25. And I'm told 2 theta is in quadrant 2. So one thing that really bothers students is they don't know where theta is located, or they have a hard time finding where theta is located. So think about the inequality. If 2 theta is between pi over 2 and pi, divide this inequality by 2, you'll find out where theta is located. Theta is between pi over 4 and pi over 2, which means theta is in the first quadrant, between 45 and 90 degrees. Okay, so let's go. Now we know where theta is. We can solve for cos 2 theta. Okay, sine 2 theta is not very useful. Okay, so we're going to try to find cos 2 theta. And I did it really quickly because I know the Pythagorean triple 7, 24, 25. If you didn't know that, just do some extra work. x squared plus y squared equals r squared and solve for x. Okay, so why do I like cos 2 theta and not sine 2 theta? Because cos 2 theta, I have that double angle formula. I have two that, are, that can help me. I can use 1 minus 2 sine squared theta or... 2 cos squared theta minus 1. Both are very good because this version, the 1 minus 2 sine squared theta, that's going to allow me to isolate for sine theta. 
if I chose to work with the two cos squared theta minus one version, that will allow me to solve for cos theta. Now, why is sine two theta not a good starting point? Because sine two theta, the double angle formula for sine two theta is two sine theta cos theta. I can't isolate sine or cos. So double angle formula for sine is not as good as a double angle formula for cosine, in this case at least. Okay, so I solve for sine theta and then uh, 3, 4, 5, Pythagorean triple, uh, they're all positive because theta is in quadrant one. So 2D, I know the ratio is a little bigger. It's 120 over 169. 2D is easier in my opinion because they started me off with cos two theta. I didn't have to, I didn't have to solve for cos two theta, right? Uh, so I chose this time, I chose to use the two cos squared theta minus one version of the double angle formula for cosine. And I rearrange, isolate for cos theta, be careful, plus or minus. Hmm, which one should I reject? Well, that depends on where theta is located. So two theta is in the fourth quadrant, three pi over two to two pi. So if you divide this inequality by two, it's now becoming, uh, theta is between three pi over four to pi. So this is in the second quadrant. So if theta is in the second quadrant, I'm gonna reject the positive, the positive ratio, because cosine is negative in the second quadrant. I love these questions because uh, I love rejecting the positive uh, ratio because students always uh, neglect, the, neglect the negative ratio. Anyways, I have cos theta. Uh, you can solve for sine theta, solve for sine theta and tan theta using x squared equal, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Because uh, in this case, you have x and r. You can easily solve for y. Okay, so question three. Three is interesting. This is also a question that students ask me a lot. So I'm told sine 75, cos 75, and I'm asked to um, express it as a single, or use a double identity, double angle identity, to find the exact value. So sine 75, cos 75, there is another way to do this, but it's much, much longer. Um, because 75 degrees um, has a reference angle of, well, it is, it, it's in quadrant one. It has 75 degrees, but um, this one, I'm just thinking it's five pi over 12. Let me just check five. Yeah, it's five pi over 12. So you could use compound angles to break apart this angle. So for example, sine 75 degrees is sine of 30 plus 45. So you can use the addition formula for sine, addition formula of cosine. That's tedious though. Just multiply by two over two, uh, create your double angle formula here for sine. So two sine 75 degrees, cos 75 degrees is sine 150 degrees. And then take half of that ratio or just multiply it by half. Much easier this way. Uh, this is the double angle formula for cosine. This is a double angle formula for cosine, double angle formula for cosine. It's all about recognizing the double angle formulas. Uh, and the only way to recognize it is if you practice enough. Double angle formula for tan, double angle formula for tan. All right, number four, uh, very similar strategy to 3a. Uh, I want to express it as a single trig function. So multiply by two over two, uh, and that will give me this multiple of two that I really want for the double angle formula for sine. And then that's it, nine over two, sine six x. Uh, number five, factor out 2.5, and then I have the double angle formula for cosine. For six, it was pretty repetitive. Um, we're basically using the double angle formulas. Double angle formula, sorry, sorry, for number six, it's the half angle, half of 45 degrees. So half angle formula for sine, half angle formula for cosine, half angle formula for tan. Don't forget 
uh, it's plus minus for sine, the half angle form for sine and cos, but it's positive and positive because 22.5 degrees is in the first quadrant. Whereas here, if you look for 6h, it's 11 pi over 12. So this is positive here, but negative here because cosine is negative in the second quadrant. Okay. So I didn't do too, all, like, uh, all of six, it was pretty repetitive. But uh, if you don't know your half angle formulas very well, I would recommend you to get a few reps in. Uh, for the challenge question, it was basically a half angle with another half angle. So they asked me what sine of 11.25 degrees is. Uh, luckily, I did 6a because I know what sine of 22.5 degrees is, so I don't have to do that work. Or sorry, I know what cos of 22.5 degrees is. I just realized I made a small boo-boo here. This should be plus here. Yeah, because I'm this is cos of 22.5 degrees. And it's plus here and plus here. Yep, so because earlier in 6a I solved for cosine of 22.5 degrees, I didn't have to do that work. If I didn't uh, um, know what cos of 22.5 degrees is, then I'd, I'd have this would be a lot chunkier. You have to do this on the side. Um, when in doubt, check your calculator. So, what you can do is type in sine 11.25 degrees, make sure it calculates in degree mode and then uh, calculate this numerical value and cross your fingers. Now let me just check the answer sheet because uh, now this got me a little worried. Yep, uh, matches the answer sheet, perfect. Okay, have fun.